The video you see is trending online and the protesters are said to be some Nigerians who are angry over their alleged neglect by embassy authorities in Indonesia. What is worrisome is that the protesters are not observing any guidelines whatsoever at a time where the coronavirus is ravaging the world. Indonesia has the highest number of reported infections in Southeast Asia, surpassing 50,000, while at least 2,573 people have died, according to official data, the highest COVID-19 death toll in East Asia outside China. Now, the placard carrying protesters claim that the country, Nigeria, is not helping them and, quote, we don't have an embassy in Indonesia. Reacting to this, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Jeffrey Onyama, condemned the attack on the Nigerian embassy in Indonesia, describing the protesters as hooligans in a series of tweets on his handle. He said there is no justification for the attack. Part of the tweet reads that absolutely deplorable, disgraceful criminal behavior by Nigerian hooligans who, without justification, attack the Nigerian embassy in Jakarta, Indonesia. Joining us via telephone is uh, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. That's NIDCOM chairman, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Erewa. Well, I thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to begin with uh, that video, which appears to be from Indonesia. Is it confirmed that Nigerians' embassy, that that is Nigeria's embassy in Jakarta and that the protesters are Nigerians? Well, I, uh, it has to do with the minister. So I'm sure the Minister of Foreign Affairs will address the issue appropriately. The minister is on that particular issue. I only just saw it on social media, but the minister will handle the issue of the mission appropriately because all those issues are under the Minister of Foreign Affairs directly. You said a number of things uh, relating to that and saying that every effort will be made to identify who they are and that they will be severely punished. But I'd like to ask you, as a chairman of NEDCOM, if you've before today gotten fillers as to the treatment of Nigerians in Indonesia... No, none at all. That's why that video was a was a, was a surprise. There was no, if if complaints came from Nigerians in Indonesia to the midcom, of course we'd tackle the boat. But maybe they've had issues with the mission and we're talking to the minister. I don't know. But um all I know is that in Indonesia we have quite a number of people in prison for drugs. And you know, in Indonesia penalty for drugs is death. So that's the case we're dealing with, appealing to them not to kill them, but they said that is their law. So there hasn't been any particular contact with the Nigerian Africa Commission about problems in Indonesia. So the one or two we received have to do with drugs, that, you know, they shouldn't let them be killed. But Indonesia says that is our law. We kill drug traffickers, depending on the quantity of drugs. So it come out. But I'm sure the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, will be on the matter. Maybe there have been issues with the mission, and I'm sure, like the minister said, he will ensure they're all punished and um, dealt with. And that is not the way to behave anyway, no matter what. Perhaps as well, seeing as the world is battling a pandemic, how much more um, are you getting in terms of how Nigerians are being treated in diaspora? And this is following all the measures that different governments are taking to curb the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, we're in touch with Nigerians in diaspora in various parts of the world. You know, it, it's um, something that's ravaging the whole world. So no country is left, left out. But the key thing is, but Nigerians in the diaspora to follow the rules that are stipulated by the countries they're living in. And then Nigerians in the diaspora are coming together to respond to help frontline workers in Nigeria. And very soon, this initiative by Nigerians in the diaspora will be presented to the PTF. And I think that is very impressive that for what they're going through, they're raising funds to support frontline workers here in Nigeria. That is very impressive. So COVID-19 era, uh, the key thing is obey the laws of the country, obey the rules and regulations put together. And our medical doctors, too, are doing online um, programs with their fellow doctors here. They, they, they share cases. It's not something you will see publicly, but they do share cases, uh, share notes, and talk to one another and move forward. So I, I'm impressed with what Nigeria and diaspora are doing. But the key thing is this is something ravaging the whole world. So we follow the rules and regulations as to the country where we're living. We've lost quite a number We've lost almost about 40 Nigerians to COVID-19 in the diaspora. All right, that's really a very um, sad thing. But 
To quickly get your thoughts, uh, South Africans came in, that's Nigerians living in South Africa, uh, just yesterday. And we hope to see more Nigerians who are stranded in different parts of the world in the evacuation process. Oh, yes, absolutely. As I speak with you, we're expecting about 18 from France. And uh, the France case is a chartered plane arranged by the mission through to Cal. And that will be the first time that, apart from those from Lebanon, you know, who, who supported us, where the mission, where they're actually coming in without paying anything. So thanks to Mrs. Modupa Irene, our ambassador in France, about 18 passengers from Europe, some from Netherlands, Germany, Spain, got together. So she got them a clean through to Tala. They'll be coming in later today, not paying anything. That, I think, is most commendable on her part. All right, we'd like to appreciate your time. Mrs. Abike Dabu-Erewa, uh, NETCOM chairman, thank you for joining us.